Have you seen this movie Fight Club? Now, I might be breaking a rule here, even talking about it in the first place, but please give me this one exception, all right? So this movie is about a guy who is played by Edward Norton, who is kind of like a decent guy. He's a good guy, well-mannered, well-spoken. He has a job and everything, kind of a meek guy who has this uh, problem of multiple personalities. So as the movie progresses, he starts behaving like this other character who is played by Brad Pitt, who is kind of a strong, rebellious, kind of an aggressive kind of a guy who starts this fight club where people can go and fight. So, which is what the movie is all about. Now, if I say that there are particles out there in nature that have the same problem. In fact, neutrinos have the same problem. Neutrinos have multiple personality disorder. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you very much. I'm joking. So this is what this video is going to be all about. Welcome to my channel. So before we talk about uh, this multiple personality of neutrinos, uh, or to be more precise, neutrino oscillations, let me give you a context to this whole thing. You see, at the core of our sun, thermonuclear fusion reactions are happening all the time, which leads to the creation of huge amounts of energy and large number of neutrinos. One of the reactions that happen at the core of the sun is two protons, they come and fuse together under very high temperature and pressure, leads to the creation of a deuterium nuclei. Now, a deuterium nuclei consists of one proton and one neutron. So that means in this process, two protons, they not only fuse together, but also a beta decay happens where a proton gets converted to a neutron, therefore leading to the emission of a positron and a neutrino. So this is part of a broader proton-proton cycle of reactions, which is one of the dominant cycles of nuclear fusion reactions that happen at the core of our sun. Therefore, vast majority of the neutrinos which are emitted from the sun are essentially electron neutrinos. Now, when scientists develop the technology to actually detect these kind of neutrinos, uh, they tried to find out the flux of these neutrinos coming from the sun and they found a very interesting puzzle. So it turns out that the theoretically predicted value of the electron neutrinos that are supposed to come from the sun to the surface of the earth and the experimentally measured flux of neutrinos on the surface of the earth were not matching. In fact, the experimentally measured flux of neutrinos was much less, almost one third to two third compared to the theoretically predicted value. This is known as the solar neutrino problem or the solar neutrino deficit. It simply refers to the discrepancy that exists uh, between the theoretically predicted flux of the electron neutrinos emitted from the sun and experimentally measured flux of the neutrinos on the surface of the earth. So this is something that puzzled scientists for a very long time, from the 1960s to the very beginning of this century before it was resolved. And it was a big challenge to come up with a kind of an explanation of why this kind of a discrepancy was happening in the first place. Now you need to understand that the neutrinos which are coming from the sun were essentially electron neutrinos. Now what is an electron neutrino? See, you see there are three kinds of neutrinos. One is the electron neutrino, the muon neutrino and the tau neutrino, which is also known as the flavor of neutrinos. They belong to the electron family, the muon family and the tau family respectively. Now these are very much distinct neutrinos. Now why do I call them distinct? This is because they are the result of different kinds of interactions. So for example, when a proton decays to become a neutron, you end up getting an electron neutrino in the process. When a anti pimeson decays into an anti muon, you end up getting a muon neutrino. And when a tau particle decays into a pimeson particle, you end up getting a tau neutrino. So these Three distinct neutrinos, the electron, muon, and the tau neutrinos are the result of different kinds of interactions. In fact, the interactions that these particles can induce are very much distinct from one another. So for example, if you look at the inverse decay processes associated with these particles, so for example, an electron neutrino can induce this particular reaction where chlorine 37 decays into 
argon 37 and releases an electron in the process while on the other hand let's suppose a muon neutrino uh, with an electron can create a muon particle and an electron neutrino in the process now you cannot interchange an electron neutrino and a muon neutrino in two different interactions and expect the interactions to happen in the first place it's not possible so this kind of an interaction cannot be induced by let's say a muon neutrino while the second interaction cannot be induced by an electron neutrino so what i'm trying to say here is that these are in fact very much distinct particles with their distinct identities and the reactions that they induce and the interactions from which they are released are very much distinct from one another and you cannot just interchange one neutrino with the other and expect the interaction to happen in the first place. So that means these are very much distinct identities of three different kinds of neutrinos which is also known as the flavor of neutrinos. So having said that, the detectors on Earth which were measuring these electron neutrinos were distinctively uh, made to measure electron neutrinos only and they were measuring these electron neutrinos to be much lower than what was theoretically predicted. Now one explanation for this kind of a solar neutrino deficit problem was provided by Bruno Pontecorvo who said that uh, there is one way we can explain this kind of a discrepancy which is by assuming that these neutrinos are in fact the mixture of certain quantum states and as these neutrinos travel through space their identities transform. Now what does that mean? Now you must have studied quantum mechanics, right? In quantum mechanics what happens? The motion of a particle as it goes from one point to another can be represented by the motion of a quantum mechanical wave, right? Whose wavelength would give us an idea about the momentum of the particle and so on and so forth. So this kind of an idea is quite common in quantum mechanics. So when you think of the neutrino, think of the neutrino as also being an wave but instead of it being represented as one wave, think of it as being represented by the interference caused by three distinct waves all right so you have the uh, electron neutrino the muon neutrino and the tau neutrino which are the flavor states of neutrinos they are essentially the result of the interference caused by three distinct waves which are known as the mass eigenstates so these states or these waveforms are named as neutrino 1 neutrino 2 and neutrino 3 they are also known as mass eigenstates or i will refer to them as simply waveforms or quantum states so what i'm essentially saying is that or what ponte corvo essentially said is that the flavor of the neutrino is the resultant of the mixing or interference of these distinct waveforms or quantum states. So that's why this is also sometimes known as neutrino mixing. So essentially the flavor of a neutrino is the result of an interference or the mixing of the mass eigenstates in certain proportions. So I can write it in this particular equation the flavor of the neutrino the electron neutrino muon neutrino and the tau neutrino is a result of the mixing of the quantum states neutrino 1 2 and 3 in different proportions now we can visualize uh, this kind of an idea using a little bit of a graphical method uh, to do that let's first uh, suppose that we are only dealing with let's suppose two flavors of neutrinos and two mass eigenstates all right so let's suppose there is an electron neutrino and a muon neutrino which are the result of a mixing of neutrino 1 and neutrino 2 and let's see if we can visualize that and get some sense out of it and then we will proceed to the general general case later on okay so here we have let's suppose these two uh, uh, quantum states represented as waveforms uh, sinusoidal waveforms let's suppose the interesting the peculiar thing about this is that both these two waveforms have different frequencies so when let's suppose a particular neutrino is emitted in some kind of a particle interaction both these two waveforms propagate through space but they propagate in such a manner because of the slight difference in the frequency they go in and out of phase with respect to each other so if they were emitted such that both these two waves were completely in phase the moment the particle interaction happened 
but with time as the particle propagates they go out of phase and they reach a point where they are completely out of phase 180 degree out of phase with respect to each other and then again after some time they come back and are in phase with respect to each other this kind of a thing keeps on happening uh, periodically over time so now what we can do is we can define the flavor of the neutrino which is the electron neutrino or the muon neutrino as being represented by let's suppose the electron neutrino is nothing but when both these two waveforms are completely in phase with respect to each other while the muon neutrino is nothing but when both these two waveforms are out of phase with respect to each other so in a sense if the uh, electron neutrino and the muon neutrino had their identities intact as they propagated through space we can in that particular case visualize that both these two waveforms will be in phase for the case of the electron neutrino while for the case of the muon neutrino both these two waveforms would be completely out of phase but in both these two cases the interesting thing is that the frequencies are same however in reality it's a little bit more complicated in the sense that the frequencies of these two waveforms are not necessarily same so when an electron neutrino is emitted in an interaction these waveforms are in phase but with time as the neutrino propagates they go out of phase and they reach a point where they're completely out of phase so which represents let's suppose as we are defining it a muon neutrino which then again uh, reaches a point where the waveforms are completely in phase which represents an electron neutrino which then again uh, goes forward and becomes a muon neutrino and on and on and on so in a sense what was originally an electron neutrino became a muon neutrino after propagating a certain distance and then that again became an electron neutrino after propagating a certain distance and on and on and on this is the essence of the idea of neutrino oscillations now you may ask a question what about the region in the middle what happens there well because we are dealing with quantum mechanics so we are essentially dealing with probabilities so there is a certain probability in the region in between for an electron neutrino to exist and a muon neutrino to exist so as you can see here the probability of the neutrino being an electron neutrino initially was the highest but as the neutrino propagated it decreased while the probability of being a muon neutrino increased at a certain point the probability of finding a muon neutrino is maximum but then again it started decreasing as a probability of finding an electron neutrino started increasing this kind of a probability wave of the flavor of a neutrino keeps on oscillating over and over again as the neutrino propagates through space this is the idea of neutrino oscillation the probability of whether or not the neutrino is in any one of the flavors the electron or muon family is oscillating periodically as the neutrino goes from point A to point B. Now what is the idea behind probability? It simply means that let's suppose there are a bunch of electron neutrinos which were created initially at the sun let's suppose then after some time uh, they will become a mixture of electron and muon neutrinos while after some time most of them will be dominated by muon neutrinos which again after some time will become a mixture of electron and muon neutrinos and on and on and on. So I hope that makes a little bit of a sense to you as to what the neutrino oscillation means. Now I told you that there are three distinct flavors right and three distinct mass eigenstates so in that same way we can also visualize uh, the sort of a mixing of these three different states. So the three flavors are the result of a mixing of these three mass states. Uh, uh, which involves this kind of a matrix the terms and the terms associated with the, this matrix is not important for our discussion but we can represent them uh, exactly by using the same kind of a waveform that I used for this uh, previous case so again if I represent the three mass states with uh, sinusoidal waveforms having different uh, frequencies then you can see that as the uh, let's suppose a, a neutrino is created then you end up getting this kind of a waveform where these distinct waveforms go in and out of phase as the neutrino propagates so we can define the electron neutrino or muon neutrino or the tau neutrino to represent a particular mixing at particular points where the waves are at distinct phases so let's suppose I represent the electron neutrino as when all of these waves are in phase with respect to each other 
and I represent the muon neutrino as when two of them are in phase one wave is out of phase and I represent the tau neutrino with a little bit of more of a complicated form. When a neutrino, let's suppose an electron neutrino is created because there is a tiny difference in the frequency of these waveforms, it changes its identity. After some time you end up getting the tau neutrino, then you end up getting the muon neutrino, then you end up getting the tau neutrino, then you end up getting the electron neutrino and on and on and on. So as the electron neutrino is is created initially after some time there is a probability that it might remain an electron neutrino or it might become a muon neutrino or it might become a tau neutrino now this whole discussion uh, I have tried to create this video just to give you a little bit of a feel flavor so to speak you know neutrino flavor so I wanted to give you a little bit of a flavor of what it actually means okay because uh, I am using an analogy which is to be very frank quite simplistic because the matrix form I that I represented to show the mixing of the neutrinos contains imaginary as well as complex terms so it is not a right to say that the precise manner in which we can represent these quantum states is using these kind of sine waves but I am only using these sine waves to give you a little bit of a visualization a little bit of a taste a little bit of a flavor of what this idea of neutrino oscillations is. Now, of course, this kind of an idea is a very different idea, a very new radical, in fact, a very bizarre idea. And because of which reason, even though the idea of neutrino oscillations was introduced by Ponte Corvo in 1960s, it was not accepted as a fact up to the beginning of this particular century. This is because the standard model assumes that neutrinos are massless. So if neutrinos are massless, uh, the quantum states that you present to show the motion of a neutrino must also have the same velocities and same frequencies. You cannot have uh, 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 waveforms that have different frequencies because if the waveforms have different frequencies, it simply means that they are associated with slightly different masses. So this whole concept of neutrino oscillation suggested that uh, neutrinos indeed have mass unlike what standard models suggested and therefore has kind of opened up the possibility of maybe uh, the existence of a different kind of physics that goes beyond the standard model in explaining this kind of a, what I said initially a personality disorder of neutrinos. So based on this idea of neutrino oscillations, what happens in the solar neutrino problem that we talked about initially? So what happens is that all the electron neutrinos that were created at the surface of the sun as it travels vast distances to reach Earth now are composed of a combination of electron neutrinos as well as muon and tau neutrinos. And since the detectors that scientists built to detect these electron neutrinos were only sensitive for electron neutrinos, they detected a lower flux of the neutrinos in the first place. So this is how neutrino oscillations can explain the solar neutrino problem. So as I said, uh, this kind of an idea of neutrino oscillations uh, basically begs the question for a physics that is beyond the standard model because according to this idea of neutrino oscillations, the neutrinos now cannot be massless anymore. They have some kind of a mass and to find the mass of these kind of neutrinos like electron muon and tau neutrinos is something of a great interest in physics in research today. So that is all for today's discussion. I hope uh, you found the video interesting. That's it. Thank you very much.